Hey everybody, I'm going to show you some fun at home uh, testing you can do with weapons now as a little side on the stream. We're gonna go into our safe house. Most people I know never go into their safe house after they start playing the game and do the necessary tutorial mission thing. I'm gonna show you guys how useful the safe house can be. So as example weapons, I'm gonna take the rattlesnake and the locomotive. And we'll just equip two-piece suit, doesn't matter. I got my player dozer build on right now. Don't, it's not fully uh, completed because I'm not at max level at the moment. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a few ways you can test weapons on your own. This will be nice so that you can test some weapons. Um, this is only a fraction of the total testing you can do, but this will help you test some weapons before I've done a video on them. As well as show you some of the science behind what I do. I want to test the accuracy on the rattlesnake, as well as its stability, and its ability with its accuracy and stability, chair's really squeaky today, to handle its own rate of fire. Hands are boiling over, I'm going to take off my Payday 2 gloves for a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the, his the hip fire of the gun, we're going to test its uh, ability to handle its own rate of fire. And we're going to test the iron sights accuracy of the gun. A lot of people really like to hip fire with a sniper rifle. But what we find when we test it is it's not very accurate doing that. It's good if you need to do something real, real, real quick. And they're right in front of you. It's good for that. But even at medium range, better idea to snap to zoom. Especially if you have the technician ability to double the speed of that. Look how quick that is. So... Here's how we're gonna test this. I'm gonna go into my iron sights and fire as fast as you can with the rattlesnake. In the exact same spot, not moving my mouse at all. So we just did six uh, test shots. They all landed in the exact same spot. That's what we call a flawless accuracy gun. They, if you shoot as fast as you can possibly shoot in the iron sights, it always lands in the precise exact same pixel. It is always going to hit exactly where you aim. That is how flawless the accuracy is. But let's compare it to not moving our mouse and firing from the hip in the exact same spot. So for reference, that bullet hole is where we're aiming. That's the center of our screen. And we're just going to keep firing. The bullet holes will disappear eventually. But as you can see, some of these shots are going pretty far away from the center. I'm just going to keep shooting here to keep testing. Occasionally, you'll get one that goes really far off. But for the most part, you're within a cone that is wider than a human's shoulders or torso. That's bad. That means you're quite likely to miss. Especially if you're aiming for something like a head which often you should be. So that is a really easy way to test right there to show that the hip fire of the rattlesnake is not nearly as good as the flawless aimed shots. I'm going to show you another testing way. We're going to use the locomotive 12 gauge here, regular double buck buckshot. We've got an accuracy of six, I believe, is what I have on this. Six is... Very high chance of uh, pe one pellet hitting the dead center of the screen for that headshot bonus, while also retaining a very wide spread for collateral damage. Now, this, uh, this is not a very good testing ground for it. We're going to see why here. We're just hitting all over the room. This is not a long-range gun. It's not really meant for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to test the spread of the gun and how accurate the spread is. A perfect way to do that is on any one of these walls. Let's go to kind of a mid-distance. Let's say here. And what we want to do is we want to aim so that our cursor, or our uh, aimer, is directly on that line. Okay? And we're going to do it with and without iron sights, first with. The bottom half of the wall is green, the top half of the wall is white. We're going to fire as fast as we can and see what side more pellets land on. For the record, Let's test here. Uh, that is too close to properly test. Uh, kind of too close. You know what? Good place to test right here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six uh, pellets come out per shell. We're going to stand right about in here. 
Actually, you know what? Back up a little. And we're gonna fire as fast as we can. So one thing we noticed there, we, we gleam two things from this. One, we have almost the exact same amount of pellets to hit the top as the bottom. There's always going to be an element of chance to this, that's why you have to practice it over and over, so that you can get the average. I mean, it's, it is statistically possible that every shot could land above the line or everyone below the line. It's just not likely. So you need to test a bunch of times just to make sure. But it's about uh, the same amount on the top as the bottom. That helps you know it's consistent spread on the gun, which is very, very useful. Consistency is one of the most important things in the game. Another thing you'll notice, um, our target is this line. Take the drywall aside, because when you shoot an enemy, drywall doesn't come out. We never lose sight of our target. You can always see where the target is. If we were using that in the battlefield, you would never have a single frame in which you can't see what you're aiming at. So if they were to move or something, you wouldn't know. With this gun, you always see. So you know as soon as they've moved, if it's something, say, a bulldozer or a shield, which can move while getting shot. I mean, even a ghost can do that, or a cloaker, rather, can do that if they don't die from the shot. Um, so, yeah, that is a good way to test it. Sorry, I got distracted from something in the chat because someone butchered the spelling of my name. Um, are a bunch of people following right now? Sorry, I need to set up a noise so I know. Um, that is how you test that. You can see how consistent the spread is just by aiming at the line of the wall and continually shooting. Can, this is also how you test visual recoil. How often do you not see the target frame by frame? What I would do is I would record this, and then when I'm doing a Payday 2 101 weapon guide, I would slow down the footage and go frame by frame in 60 frames per second footage and count how many frames per shot you can't see your target. This is really important stuff for very high level play for analyzing guns. This is how you pick between very similar guns, especially. Keycard. So that little bit of insight into how my testing goes. Let's switch weapons real quick to show some more. Um, so what I want to do here is we're going to test... Uh, as an example, I guess, the Peacemaker, I don't have my pistol skills on. Full disclosure, this is not a proper testing session, I want to point out. I would be testing these a lot more thoroughly, normally. We're going to take the Repeater and the Peacemaker. So this is to everyone out there who seems to think that, uh... It's everyone out there who seems to think that, uh, the testing might not be hardcore enough that I do. So this is without any pistol perks. Don't take this uh, this analysis of the gun too seriously. I have tested a little bit with perks. However, um, I still need to put it through more thorough testing. We fired one shot, and we're going to go into Hawk's HUD here. The Hawk's HUD is very nice for analyzing these guns, by the way. We're going to turn on the reload timer. One second per bullet. So if we fire all of our shots... But you can see right there the accuracy. Pretty accurate at this range from hip fire. Six second reload timer for a pistol is brutally slow. Although it is bullet by bullet, which does give you the luxury of being able to stop anytime you need to. And you can also reload shots and stop reloading on the fly to deal with an enemy that pops up. Let's run out of ammo. We're walking and reloading. And I see an enemy. Start clicking. You still need to wait for that second to end. And because of that full one second reload time, not only do you reload slowly, but um, not only do you reload slowly, but it can really delay you quickly killing an enemy. With the locomotive, it's a third of a second delay at most. I mean, if you're almost done putting the shell in, it's less than that. That's a huge difference in reaction time. Another one is uh, the repeater. Repeater also reloads shot by shot. Let's just fire a few shots off. And we can see it reloads shot by shot. It's a half second reload on every bullet. Repeater counts as a sniper rifle, technically, but it's not really.
Uh, it's not really a sniper rifle. It performs like a really good rattlesnake. However, it can't use a proper scope, and in fact, its iron sights are quite balls, and its only scope zooms in way too far. Way too fucking far and has no peripheral vision. Terrible scope. Absolutely terrible scope. The only alternative, I believe, is the iron sight, which is also really bad, because look at that. So the bullet hole is where I'm hitting, right? But when I start shooting, you can't see the bullet hole for the majority of the time. You can't see where the hell you're shooting. That's bad, and then eight and a half second reload time if you want to go from empty to full, but it's not terribly often you'll be doing that, so I don't hold that against it too much. The, the massive magazine size is a plus. But, you can see, the accuracy is perfect accuracy. If you're aiming here, even with the relatively fast fire speed for a sniper rifle, always hit the same spot. With hip fire, it is ridiculously bad hip fire. Would you fucking look at that? I'm hitting walls on the left. Like, that hip fire is horrible. And that's something you would never guess just by looking at the statistics. You see an accuracy of 22 and you think, wow, its accuracy must be fucking flawless. Hi, Millie. Subscribers in the chat can now pull out your Millie emoticons. So, the, the fucking accuracy is just fucking horrible on hipfire. Look at this garbage! You're never gonna hit a target at this range on hipfire. And, but you can switch to the iron sight, where you'll hit every time if you can see your target, which you can't if you're repeatedly shooting. Making this a really deceptively bad uh, weapon if you're using it as a sniper rifle. And in fact, it's also quite bad if you're using it as a repeater, because your hip fire is balls. Let's stand from this carpet and test. Hip fire, this is much closer than the shooting range. And it is still never hitting the center of the screen, even at this range. Let's get closer. We are almost point blank at this point. For anyone who doesn't know, point blank is within 15 feet, I believe. Uh, I'm not terribly good with feet. I am Canadian. We don't we, we measure with metric, not imperial. But we are at very close range now. Shotgun would be crazy effective at this range. Let's try this. Now we are consistently hitting close enough to the center that we would hit most of the shots. Not all. Most. So, what we've learned today is this rifle that looks on paper just marvelous is really not that good. It's fun, but it's really not that good. And you would only know that through testing it. And if, if you could be deceived just going through a stage and shooting at enemies and thinking, uh, you could come to all kinds of conclusions because it's such a, it's not a good testing environment. It is so wild, there's so many differences. In a proper testing environment, you find that this is not nearly as effective as other guns. It's not even accurate enough to shoot the door open in three hits with the barrel pressed against the door. That is how unreliable it is. We can try this too. Which is also not terribly reliable, but that is mostly because of our lack of skills in it. These are all things you wouldn't know if you didn't test it, or if you didn't watch my show and see that I test it. I test these things. So, all kinds of fun little things you can learn if you just take time and uh, test these things in the fire range. Here's another thing. I'm big on the Predator 12 gauge. I love the Predator 12 gauge. I don't think it's one of the best guns in the game. It's really fun, and it's probably... It's, it's in the top bracket, I would say that. But there are better choices usually. Uh, even with a player dozer, in certain maps, uh, I would take a locomotive and a predator and juggle them. But it does make you bad at long range. If other people in your team can cover that for you, that's nice. I would kind of lean a little bit closer to a sniper rifle or car 4 in general. But I'm going to prove to you that the predator is quite awesome. I'm going to compare it with the locomotive because they're both clearing shotguns. 
How many guns- more guns are you testing on the stream today? Probably just a few. I'm just showing you a few little tricks for at home. So, this is the Predator 12 gauge. I think it's called- in real life it's like Spaz 12 or something. Uh, really cool um, gun. And here's why. It has probably the least visual recoil of any gun in the game. Let's compare. It's also got quite a good firing rate, but it's mostly the visual recoil that makes this gun such a good clearing shotgun. You always, always see what's going on with this. So we got the locomotive out right now. Let's just shoot a little bit. Take, uh, observe how the gun moves. Good fire speed. Now observe this. First thing we notice, it's reasonably faster. The speed difference is not huge in the battlefield because they're both fast enough that you're not going to need to shoot that fast against enemies. Usually when you're using a shotgun, your first shot's going to kill them. You're going to be switching from target to target, you know, boom, 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 stuff like that, looking at the targets. They're both fast enough, so I'm not going to hold fire speed against either one of them. Um, they're clearing shotguns. A big thing of that is how fast they shoot. Here's what we're going to see, though. Iron sight. Gun wavers a lot, but we always see our target. Now look at this. The gun snaps back without wavering. It hardly wavers. You can see it better in frame by frame, but... It juts back, pulls down. There is no waving around. Just whips up, whips down real quick. You still see very, very clearly. That is something that I believe only this shotgun has. The M1014 has it to a degree. However, in general, for clearing a shotgun, this one is much better than the M1014. M1014 is an incredible utility shotgun for heat-treated rounds because of its huge um, total ammo and magazine size. It's quite good for that. Uh, we can also see reliability here. Um, where did we test? I think we tested the locomotive from here. Your eyeball everywhere, and when the smoke clears, about even. Let's test it a few more times just to see if it was a fluke. About even, and we'll test it one more time. I do wish that bullet holes stayed for longer, because it does make it hard to test sometimes. Sometimes I have to take a lot of screenshots uh, just to analyze it for longer. Perfectly even on that one. So, reliable spread. Uh, it's a spread that you can trust. You always know around where it's going to land. We'll go at... Um, let's, let's try different ranges. Let's try at the end of the carpet. This hallway right here is a, pr is a very good one for testing, by the way. Just waiting for the bullet holes to go away. Hi, Melee. She's sulking because I didn't give her enough attention. And once again, perfectly reliable spread and stays in a very tight cone. Uh, we're actually going to test from there with the locomotive to compare. All of the holes are touching each other. Uh, the, the blast radius from it touch each other on the drywall. That is how close they are. They've evaporated in our self-regenerating walls. We're going to do 10 shots. Still reliable, more spread out. So we know that the spread is tighter on the um, on the Predator, which is not necessarily good or bad. I would consider it a little bit of a disadvantage to the Predator over the locomotive, entirely because they both would have definitely hit the target on every shot. Whereas, um, if you hit the target on every shot, but you also have a wide spread, that's the best, because then you're most likely to hit other things around them while still hitting what you're aiming at. And uh, if we aim at it and then pull out of iron sight... So that's the hip fire spread, which is definitely much wider, still hitting the target on every shot. And as our last little test here, let's get that on the line... Um, the primary shotgun I was using is the Predator 12 gauge. The secondary, which I'm testing right now, is the Locomotive 12 gauge. Two very good shotguns. Locomotive's better in general. 
However, it's a secondary, and this one's a primary, so you can justify taking both of them if it's the right heist. Jesus. And they're quite good at breaching, but really any, um... Any, uh... Any clearing shotgun is particularly good at breaching. Just a nice little bonus for if you're trying to get through a place quickly. Yeah, there's a good point there by uh, Arch Reven in the chat. The way it works with shotguns is uh, in Payday 2. As long as one pellet hits the target... Wow, that was a tight one. As long as one pellet hits the target, it counts as full damage. And if any of those pellet pellets hit the head, it's full head damage. However, if every pellet, like, hypothetically were to hit one guy, it would be the same damage as one pellet hitting the guy. All that matters is at least one pellet hits. And if one pellet hits the head, even better. Another reason why you should always aim for the head. So there are some tips for you on uh, Payday 2 on how you can test it on your own and learn a lot of things. Now, there's more testing that would need to be done if I were to put these weapons on the show, of course. I would need to test it actually out on the battlefield. I would need to look at its damage charts to make sure, you know, how many headshots does it take to kill different things? What about with this skill? What about with this skill? Um, I would need to get in a battle and test how much ammo do I pick up every time I get an ammo pickup. Uh, so, like, how good as, is it at not draining the team's ammo, essentially? Uh, did he read from the chat, or... I, I do read the chat every once in a while, uh, so I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Because I don't know what that's responding to. So yeah, um, a lot of different ways you can test these weapons. I really do recommend you test all of them, like I do before you put up a video or anything. Uh, just because you really need to know everything you can about it before you put a video out. Because the Payday 2 101 is all about educating players. I don't want to put out misinformation. Yeah, if you had five pellets hit the body and one pellet hit the head, it would still be headshot damage, not body shot damage. If any pellet hits them, they take full damage. If any pellet hits the head, they take full head damage. Uh, so it, they only get calculated for damage once per shell fired, uh, not per pellet, if that makes sense. So hypothetically, if the spread were to be flawless enough and six people were all clumped together, you could fire a shot that kills six people if all six pellets hit them. That is to say, six pellets on the locomotive. Different shotguns have different amounts of pellets per, per shell, uh, depending on what ammo they use. Um, for instance, if you use triple lot buckshot on a locomotive, it's five pellets instead of six, so less potential for spread, however much more damage. I would still recommend in general with a locomotive just using the default double lot buckshot, which is if you equip no special ammo, ammo you've got double lot. And double lot works very well for the locomotive. That's it for my little thing on teaching you all how to test some weapons. Let's get back on with the stream as normal. <laughs>